Okay, my first question, in and out or Five Guys? Ooh, in and out all day, baby. Tell me why. in and out because it's a little quicker. I actually like the fries. Not everybody does. And the grilled onions. That's a game up, changer. Yeah. Fire on the in and out burgers. Do you do chilies? I love the chilies on mine. I'm not a big chilies guy, but uh-huh. I do love chilies, the restaurant <laughs> chips and salsa. <laughs> Those are good. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. Welcome to season three of 10 Questions with 10 Pastors. Brought to you by Gateway Seminary. With your host, Tyler Sanders. This episode was recorded live at the 2023 SPC annual meeting. Okay, I'm here with Hayden Ratner. He is the pastor and planter of Walk Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right. Also a Sin City missionary. So that would be in Vegas, I guess, right? right. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do with there? Yeah, so I work with the Send Network, the church planning organization with the North American Mission Board. And so anybody that is interested in church planning in Las Vegas, Nevada, I get to know about it and try to help them take their next step, whether that's assessment, being endorsed by the Send Network, um, coaching, care, training, partnership, uh, being a part of a family in a city, not just a part of an organization that's somewhere that has to do with getting a check. No, you're part of something, a family. It's bigger than than just you trying to plant a church. You're part of a family. And so my job is to really help people feel that yeah. and to take their next step. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and to recruit sure, new people yeah. from all around the world and the country to consider partnering and planting in Vegas. So if you're listening to this, I got to just shoot my shot. No, do it. Yeah, tell and us. And you're thinking about planting, think about planting in Vegas. Yeah. I'd love to talk with you about it. Well, how can they contact you? Yeah, you can contact me at my email, hratner, H-R-A-T-N-E-R, at nam.net. And uh, we'd love to hit you back, follow up. Let's do it. Take a next step. That's awesome. Now, why don't you tell us uh, how you became a Christian? So I became a Christian. I uh, didn't grow up in a Christian home, but I uh, grew up as a basketball idolater. I love the sports world and grew up playing basketball, going to games. Uh, went to James Madison University in Virginia. Yeah. Got invited to FCA, Fellowship Christian Athletes. And from there, I began asking questions. What do I believe? I kind of showed up to get the free pizza and God just began using that to, to spark my curiosity about mm. faith. I always believed in God. My dad being Jewish, my mom, more of a Christian background. Yeah but I didn't quite know what I believed. So I began pursuing faith in the Bible. Someone gave me a word and opened up to the Gospel of Matthew. Hmm. And really just by reading one chapter a day, I landed in Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. And I felt like the Holy Spirit brought me into that chunk of scripture and I could hear Jesus tell me, depart from me, I never knew you. Hmm. And I didn't want that to be my testimony. Yeah. And what's also really challenging about that, that, block there is it says many will come to me and say didn't i cast out demons prophesy do miracles and i realized that if these people aren't getting in you know and they got this like resume of activity i'm for sure like all i do is show up to fca like i what am i gonna say yeah and i realized the the primary calling on my life wasn't to do something for jesus but a relationship with jesus yeah i never knew you like that and so i just said Right there as a freshman in college, I'm going to just start getting to know Christ. That's going to be my sole goal. My mission is to know him. And uh, from there, everything has came out of that knowing. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what are you reading right now? Right now, I'm reading uh, Lead Like It Matters. It's a book by Craig Rochelle. Okay. Um, it's a leadership book. And he's talking about this phrase, it. How do you have the it? How do you know when you can get find the it, get the it, develop the it. And so it's a great leadership book that has been challenging me in my walk recently. That's good. That's good. I got a couple of preaching questions for you. Let's do it. So big picture, like how do you approach planning out series, big themes? What's your, uh, what's your thinking process on that? That's good. So I would be a a combination of expository Uh and uh, topical in my preaching style and calendar lean more expository as far as when it comes to just preaching through a book. Like right now we're in the book of Galatians. We okay, just finished yeah. up chapter two and we've spent the last several months working through chapter one and chapter two. We're probably 15 plus sermons in, yeah. in the first two chapters. Yeah, yeah. And so we're just 
we're, we're, we're not set. There's no timeline necessarily. It's saying mm -hmm. we hit the next chunk of verses. If we don't get through it, we'll pick it up next week. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're preaching through Galatians and just taking it one verse at a time, either chunk of verses at a time, staying in context. Um, and that's been good. But now we're going to take a quick break during the summer and do a topical series. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's more like kind of week to week with yeah. like a specific verse or a sp like uh, with the summer set list. So what's your what's a song that relates to a scripture and we'll preach out of that. Yeah, we'll do something yeah, that's yeah. geared around Christmas or we'll do something that's let's yeah, focus sure. on the Easter season. So yeah, yeah. I think the calendar kind of sets you up for some yeah. things, just a year by year calendar. But my leaning is we just, you know, go through books of the Bible and preach through them. Yeah. Point to Jesus through them. Now, what's your like week to week uh, routine like? How do you do in sermon prep? Yeah, so I like to, uh, with a more of an expositional approach, I, I know pretty close to where I'm going. So yeah. after we finished Galatians 2, uh, 14, I knew I was going to hit 15 through 18. So I'm reading it. I got a handful of commentaries that I'm reading through it with. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a team of, of pastors that I'm bouncing ideas off with kind of throughout the week. But as of late, this has changed throughout the years. As of late, I'm putting the the strong work of my sermon in typically on Fridays. Wow. Yeah. So I have like a kind of a, a rolling note in my phone. Yeah. Where I'm I'm typing down ideas, illustrations. Um, I got a word doc that's like developed. Yeah. But it's sporadic. Yeah. On Friday, I feel like it's all ready to just get thrown on an right. actual like here's what I'm gonna preach. Yeah. Points, title, uh, Closing, intro, you know, I, I throw all that together. But it, whereas before I was trying to get that done earlier in the week, I felt like I didn't have what I needed yeah. at that time. Yeah. And I, and I think I'm a, a more like thought through, I'm always dreaming and visualizing. Something might just hit me right now and I might right. put that in my phone yeah. for when I'm ready to put it down. Yeah. So that's kind of what's been working as of late. Um, we've had a teaching team in our, in our church, which looked like uh, different uh, people that are passionate about the word, preaching, communicating. Yeah. Um, currently in this season, that team is not functioning right now as far as we're not meeting on a weekly basis like yeah, we were, yeah. um, but we're looking to get back to it. That's cool. Yeah. And so in that situation, are you guys reading each other's work or are you kind of helping guide each other along or is it more like sh just sharing the load and kind of splitting it up? Yeah, that looks like we come into that meeting. It's about an hour long mm -hmm. and we know the text. We read the text. And um, one of our pastors, Pastor Mike, who's just a beast with the theology and the Greek and the Hebrew, he's going to kind of set the context, the setting for yeah, yeah, yeah. the text. He's going to say, hey, here's the author. Here's what's going on in this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's some big ideas, big thought. Now let's talk about how do you preach that? Yeah. How do you not just teach that, but how can you make that, you know, uh, tasteful and encourage? Yeah. How do you preach the word yeah. and the lost person actually lean in and get something out of it? Yeah. And how do you find Jesus? And I think every text should, I think Spurgeon, right, should make a beeline to the cross. Right. And right. Um, want to get there. Yeah. What do you think is the most difficult or challenging passage you've preached on? Ooh most difficult and challenging passage. You know, man, this may sound cliche, but we did a, we did a topical series mm. a few years back and we just called it Tough Questions. We opened it up to our church. We put a number on the screen that you could text your questions in. We said, whatever questions get the most asked, wow. we'll, we'll, we'll preach off of them. So are you doing this kind of live or like you'd get questions and yeah, we'll do say, it like hey, a week later or something? Text this number. Yeah. And next week, we're going to let you know wow. which uh, questions get asked the most. Yeah. We got a lot of questions about homosexuality, sure, yeah, same-sex yeah. attraction, yeah. same-sex marriage, yeah. that, just that topic in general, and forced us, in a way, to yeah, address the questions it, yeah. that were being asked. And so I remember preaching a, a sermon. You know, we use this phrase, what does the Bible say about? Yeah. And so I uh, did a sermon, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Yeah. And um, I remember... Just putting the work in, the study in, and um, hearing a lot of great response to that people needed some clarity. Yeah. And to try to approach that topic from a pastoral position, but really that's grounded in the word, not in the culture. Yeah. Um, has been helpful, but it wasn't easy. It was a yeah. hard, to, hard, hard sermon to deliver. Yeah. But grateful we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, church planners have to do a lot of different things in ministry. Yeah. What would you say is like a role that you're really comfortable with, you feel particularly gifted in, and maybe what's like a role or responsibility that you're a little like less comfortable in, something you're kind of working on still? Yeah, that's a good question. Now I feel very, like I'm, I'm wired very relational. Hmm. So 
I'm not a big office-y guy, yeah. although I know the value of sitting down, meetings, whiteboards, yeah. Excel spreadsheets, uh, vision, strategy. There's value in it. It's necessary. Yeah. Um, it's just not my strong suit. Yeah. I'm more relational, disciple making in the city, engaging with lost people, yeah. trying to help people uh, take their next step on the ground. Um, that for me is life giving. Uh, yeah. I'm extroverted. Um, if I'm around people, uh, I'm excited. And I, I have an eye for the person who is a little bit detached on a mm. conversational list. Yeah, sure. You know, I want to try yeah. to find common ground and and spark interest and yeah um i'm passionate about walking with people um so i think that's as and i think as a church planter you need that sure yeah you 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 can plant a church if you don't have that but you better have people around you that do yeah right Um, or else it's going to be hard to gather people yeah especially in in probably lost cities yeah people aren't going to church culturally Right. Um, but I think on the flip side, the the administrative component, um, I've had to surround myself with people that were better than me when it came to right, doing right, the right. work of administration. That's super necessary. Because if you get somebody to go to church and they make a decision to receive Christ and they hand in a connection card and you yeah. fumble it. Yeah, yeah. And That's you leave, huge. You're like, yeah. all right, well, what the heck, man? Like, yeah. you know, you need both. Yeah. You need the person yeah, that's going to sure. follow up and email and call and yeah. get them a Bible, you know. So yeah, I think absolutely. We've had to learn over the seasons the value of, of all of it, holistic discipleship. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me like a swing and a miss you've had in ministry? Ooh, swing and a miss. Yeah, I think my biggest swing and a miss um, has been running at a pace that was not in a way that my wife was able to keep up at. Mm. And therefore, I'm not able to keep up at. Yeah. And I think if we really have this oneness reality, which the two become one, right, in marriage, praise yeah. God, you know, the, it's more of the pace we need to run at. Right. What's helpful for her is, is what's helpful for me. What's helpful for me is what's helpful for her. And so I think there's been seasons where maybe that's been more secondary for me. Or, hey, she'll catch up. Right, right, right. And that doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think that that creates burnout. That creates unhealth. Yeah. Um, and I think there's been pockets throughout our eight years of planting where either I ran ahead and she had good wisdom and said, hey, slow down. Yeah. It could be with hiring somebody. It could be with oh, wow. yeah, yeah. a dream, a vision. Hey, let's yeah. do this. Let's let's go toward this building. Let's yeah. let's spend, you know, it could be any of that. And and there were sometimes I'll be like, hey, so Nina, we did this. And she's like, oh man, I would have loved to have spoken part into of that. that, been yeah, part yeah. of that. Yeah. Did you consider my pace? Right. And um I don't say that in a way that's negative. I say that in a way hmm. that her input would actually have saved us a lot of hurt, right? Frustration, right? Um, it would have been it would have strengthened our marriage, sure, strengthen yeah. our our leadership decisions. My wife's incredibly gifted; she's yeah. wise. She she's part of our executive leadership team. Yeah, and so I just think um, that's been some swing and swings and misses yeah. on my part um, to just not be uh, not not being aware. Yeah, I think that's key. Like. Awareness is key. Like, are you aware of the pace that you're running at together? Yeah. 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 Now, I usually ask this before we record, and I forgot to. Did, hey, you, go, did, you, uh, did you go to seminary? I did, yep. So I went to Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. That's awesome. Mouthful there. Mouth, it is a, yeah, there's a lot more uh, syllables in that. Well, yeah. I, I said Southeastern to somebody recently, and they were like, oh, like the Southeastern over here? And I'm like, oh, no, we're talking about yeah. a different <laughs> Southeastern. <laughs> you know, so I, I had to say the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- this question is about seminary and it's, uh, it's what do you, th- uh, really the way to put this is like if a person goes to seminary, what's the, like the one thing they can't miss? Like mm. what's that thing that if they, they leave and they don't have it, they've really, they missed something valuable. Well, I think that when you go to seminary, Danny Aiken helped speak this into mm. me when I was attending and that's. How do you live out the great commandment to love the Lord your God with all your mind? Yeah. You know, and 
that that's one of the things seminaries i think wherever seminary you go to whether it's gateway sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, or a southeastern whatever yeah hopefully it's helping you love god better with your with all your mind yeah and i tried to approach it like that not only that but i think there's some some the theological items that if we're if we're honest there's still probably some theological items that were gray on or that could use some developing. Yeah. And I think what what seminary did for me was help me kind of put some stakes in the ground. Um, like, okay, now I really know what I believe. This yeah, forced yeah. me to kind of chisel off some of the fat yeah. of some tough biblical topics. Sure. Yeah. That I, I, I probably wouldn't have spent, did the work to figure out what do I really believe yeah. on this topic. I'll yeah. figure it out someday. Right. Um, right. I think seminary, you know, kind of nudges you to, no, no. Yeah, establish those give things. Give you a stance. Yeah. And and then you can actually be confident in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my last question. If you could tell Hayden Ratner, first year of ministry, something, some piece of advice, what would Ooh. it be? Ooh. Tell Hayden Ratner, first year in ministry, I would say to him, similar to what I just shared, enjoy, enjoy the process mm. with your wife. It's going to be all right. You're not going to figure it out tomorrow. Mm. You got, what, how many Sundays in a year? 52? 52, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. You had an L, get back up the next week. Make it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, slow down. Don't speed up. You'll get there. Yeah. You know, um, and and I think in part B, if I could, say, sure, hey, of can, course, can, yeah. I, can I give you ten more seconds? Yeah. Um, is just when it comes to hiring people hmm. or bringing people on your team. Yeah. Look less for skill and talent, and look more for culture and personality fit. Yeah. And I think that we've learned over the years, because when you start, you don't know what you don't know. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh man, this person's dope. They can, they can X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I know they don't really fit, yeah. but we'll figure that out. You don't figure that out. Yeah. What you can figure out is how to teach somebody how to do pro present. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. teach somebody how to play something. Yeah. But culturally, man, that's such a big deal. And so I, I've really, learn that that whole quote from Peter Drucker culture eats strategy for breakfast yeah like man this would be very strategic to get this person but their culture isn't the same yeah and so I think look more for culture look more for personality and values look less for talent and skills yeah. that would have been great for me to, to hear yeah. before we started that's good yeah well that's all my questions but I do want to give you one more one more opportunity to uh, tell people how to contact you Awesome. Because man. we definitely want to get more church planters out here in the West, specifically in Las Vegas. Yeah, and we love planting churches out of Walk Church. We've partnered mm -hmm. with 10 churches. We've planted two, and one of our plants is getting ready to plant. So we're going to be oh, a grandparent that's, church. That's Come awesome. On. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, if you could email me, Hayden, H E I D E N, at Walk Church, W A L K, walkchurch.com. Email me at Hayden at walkchurch.com. Um, or if you want to know more about Send Network, hratner at nam.net. We'd love to follow up with you. Either of those. You can find me on our website, walkchurch.com as well. And yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep getting better. That's perfect. Hayden, thanks for your time. Thank you. Praise God.